All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and the Washington Commanders seem to have finalized their coaching staff. They have now hired a defensive lines coach in Daryl Tapp. We also hired a defensive quality control coach in George Banco coming from the University of Alabama. We also hired an assistant quarterbacks coach in David Blau and more coaching updates. First of all, Anthony Lynn's official title and responsibilities have been clarified also it's really interesting that we're not hiring an assistant head coach for dan quinn because that's very rare he usually has an assistant head coach on his staff really interesting that we're not going to have one for this staff i was thinking that anthony lynn may end up being that guy but apparently nobody will be we, we have all of that to dive into plus more with Steve Wilkes fired by the 49ers, should we consider bringing him in for a role? Are there any roles left, basically? It doesn't look like it, but we're going to talk about it still anyway. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm the like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I know this is a late night upload, but I wanted to make sure I got this to y'all because you never know. I'm recording this at 2.30 a.m., but by the time 11 a.m. comes around, there may be more breaking news about something random so i felt like i should go ahead and get this one out the way even already did two videos earlier wednesday and i know this is technically going into thursday early morning but i was we got to get this out the way you never know the commanders have surprised me left and right i wasn't expecting us to hire an assistant gm at all let alone yesterday so i figured let's go ahead and get this out the way i want to get all of these coaching updates out the way but it's really interesting though because we still have to worry about a training staff i don't believe we have a training staff yet so we still got to focus on that as well that's an update i'm gonna give y'all but as soon as we're done with all of that or even before we get with this training staff stuff figured out i'm gonna go ahead and start really diving into this free agency and draft stuff so stay tuned with for more content like that but without further ado let's go ahead and get to this video let's get it All right, and so now another 49ers assistant coach is headed to Washington. San Francisco's assistant defensive lines coach, Daryl Tapp, who played defensive end and linebacker in Washington in 2013 during his 12 NFL seasons, is taking over as the commander's defensive lines coach. Welcome back, Daryl Tapp. And it's being reported that he had interest from other teams, including the Tennessee Titans. He's 39 years old, played in the NFL for a dozen seasons, including Washington's franchise in 2013, and is a former Seahawks second round pick from Virginia Tech. So this is a home guy from maybe not necessarily the DMV specifically, but he's from around the area, probably even grew up a Burgundy and Gold fan. Now, this was one of the two remaining job openings. Running back was the other. Anthony Lynn, I don't know why it took so long, but they have, from what I'm seeing reported, have officially given him that running backs coach title along with the run game coordinator that he was already announced to be. And then the last one was defensive lines coach. We already had the assistant defensive lines coach hired. We already had a pass rush specialist slash outside linebackers coach hired. And so Daryl Tapp is now coming in to be the official defensive lines coach. And I'm very excited, man. Of course, with a lot of these positional coaches, we don't exactly know what to believe in yet. We don't have much past and experience to really dive into to judge whether or not this is a potentially a good hire and whether they're going to potentially do a great job for us. It's a lot of just wait and see and see what they do and how these guys develop. Again, I'm a fan of the fact that we have three guys dedicated to just specifically getting greatness out of the defensive line. We already have a bunch of xdb developers defensive back coaches and things like that as our head coach as our defensive coordinator defensive pass game specialist all of that and then we brought in ken norton jr to handle the linebacker situation and i love the fact that for the defensive line we have a defensive lines coach an assistant defensive lines coach and then ryan kerrigan is just a pure pass rush specialist along with being the outside linebackers coach and again like i've talked about before that role sounds like a 3-4 outside linebacker type of situation. So are we going to slowly turn from a 4-3 to a 3-4? Dan Quinn has historically loved to run the 4-3 defense. But an outside linebackers coach slash pass specialist and Ryan Kerrigan, really interesting. Literally sounds like a Bond Miller, Khalil Mack type of guy. But we'll see. But again, if Anthony Lynn is going to be the run game coordinator and running backs coach, 
we are officially done and i can again start to focus on fan free agency in the draft again it's being reported that he is but i haven't seen like an official announcement from the washington commander so we'll see i'll keep you updated on that but i love the fact that this is another coach from the 49ers super bowl staff give me as many 49ers and Chiefs staffers as possible is what I was thinking while they were in the Super Bowl. Like literally watching the Super Bowl, I was like, please give me as many people who contributed to the success of those teams for them to even get to this point as possible. We got Adam Peters who helped build the 49ers and was the guy that is given credit for drafting anybody fourth round or later for them. It's like George Kittle, just to start naming a few. And even though Fred Warner was drafted in the third, a lot of people say that Adam Peters deserves a lot of credit for that pick as well. Just the whole overall... I mean Brock Purdy seventh round so we have that guy then we took Anthony Lynn to be our run game coordinator and now we have Daryl Tapp as our defensive lines coach so that's three guys from the 49ers organization those weren't the three that I imagined when we first hired Adam Peters and we hired Dan Quinn as a head coach we were looking around like is it going to be Clint Kubiak is it going to be the Titans coach whoever but I'm very happy with who we ended up with very happy and you could definitely tell with this hire of Anthony Lynn earlier and the official announcement of Daryl Tapp being hired recently that the commander were waiting for the Super Bowl to end for them to go ahead and snag these guys up to finish up their staff which makes me very happy for several reasons reason number one they are doing their due diligence they are not impatient and trying to fill in their coaching staff as soon as possible yeah that's great and all but it's not the number one priority the real number one priority for the Washington Commanders was clearly to build the best coaching staff possible not the quickest and instead of mainly hiring from a pool of like 30 NFL teams while the other two were still busy going to the Super Bowl, the commanders weren't playing around. They waited and they were willing to wait to evaluate candidates from all 32 teams, including the two that were in the Super Bowl, which, of course, they had to wait until after the Super Bowl was finished to achieve. So I love the fact that they waited on that. Number two, the fact that they waited until these two guys were available says a lot. For the commanders to have these two coaches open is just sitting there waiting for Anthony Lynn and Daryl Tapp until they were finally available lets me know that they really wanted these guys. And if Adam Peters, Josh Harris, Dan Quinn, and the staff that we're building want th wanted those guys that bad, it tells you everything you need to know about who these guys are and the potential that they have in this coaching staff for us. I mean, we're literally we're holding these guys seats with like an extra bag on like say the commander's coaching bus basically so that nobody could take the seat or maybe they were just sitting like sideways in the seat with their legs stretched out across the other two seats on the aisle and was like nah no somebody else is going to sit here soon and now and in that scenario who do you think was the one holding the seat for him it looks like because I was thinking about it and it seems like it was definitely like an Adam Peters situation because a lot of the hires we made before Wednesday as in February 14th seem to be Dan Quinn hires especially because of his connections to a lot of the guys that we hired if even going all the way back to like his days of coaching college football and things like that but now I'm wondering we were saving a couple of coaching spots for open for potentially like an Adam Peters to make his own hires that's what it looks like Dan Quinn clearly has been the main guy responsible for most of the hires we've already made in the coaching staff and maybe Adam Peters was like wait a minute hold up I got a few guys in the back of my mind from my time with the 49ers that I want to bring with me so leave these spots open I will fill those myself and I mean of course Dan Quinn can interview them everybody could talk to them Joe Witt Jr. on the defensive side Cliff Kingsbury on the offensive side probably had a little bit of input as well but Adam Peters was like now is my time to shine let me bring in some of my guys that I have relationships with with the 49ers team that we built to go to the Super Bowl just last week and again just to remind you he did play with the Washington Redskins for one season in 2013 and he's been the 49ers assistant defensive lines coach for the last three seasons so he's been doing this this is a promotion for him shouts out to him congratulations now does that mean that maybe he'll have a say in Chase Young coming back to the burgundy and gold under this new look burgundy and gold because this is not the same burgundy and gold as last year the one that chase young was trying to avoid you know chase young looked pretty good in that super bowl i mean it's really funny but interesting because before the super bowl i was like hell no to the responsibility of bringing back chase young but now i'm like wait a minute 
But nah, that bridge is already burned, just to be completely clear. He clearly hated it here, and I highly doubt that he would even want to come here on top of the fact that we might not even want him. And also, even though Adam Peters is no longer there, that's still crazy to give up a third round pick for a guy and only get single digit games out of him. Like, that's insane. You got to resign him if you're the 49ers. You had to have had re-signing him as like a priority after you trade, even before you traded for him. Also, I don't think the money is going to match up with Chase Young once compared to what we're probably willing to give him. And even just beyond that. Even if it weren't the commanders involved, would he be willing to leave a team that was that close to winning the Super Bowl to, a, to re basically rejoin what we're calling a rebuild here or my bad, a recalibration according to Dan Quinn. So for those several reasons, Chase Young is not coming to the Washington Commanders. But I thought it was interesting that we were able to get their assistant defensive lines coach to come be our defensive lines coach. And maybe he can try to put in a word for Chase Young. But again, I've already listed like five, six reasons why it will not happen. But also with us hiring Daryl Tapp as our defensive lines coach officially, sounds like Jeff Ganina is officially out. And I like Jeff Ganina. But if the coaching staff feels like they, they, they should bring in somebody else, I'm not here to argue. I'm very optimistic about the hire because we did retain some guys. We retained Tavita Pritchard as quarterbacks coach. We retained Bobby Ingram as wide receivers coach. And pretty much everybody else had to go from the previous regime. So if, if whatever strategy they have going on, whatever plan they have in place, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and keeping it pushing like that. Also moving on. The commanders have hired longtime Alabama staffer George Banco from the Crimson Tide. He is coming here for a defensive quality control coach position. It's really interesting, like not anything major, but since we're already talking about Daryl Tapp, it's like I might as well go ahead and throw this in here. This is not one of those hires where it's like, oh man, this guy's about to change the franchise. Now that we have him, boy, things are about to go crazy like I normally do with a lot of these hires. I'm not even going to sit here and try to fake it. This guy is not going to be very impactful immediately, but you never know with him coming from Alabama and with the winning culture that they have built there, maybe he can work his way up and maybe he's a secret genius in hiding. But as of right now, it's a big question mark, a big non-applicable. He's coming here to be a defensive quality control coach. He's not going to have much impact on the team, but I'm happy that they're looking all over the place. This hire shows me that they're looking everywhere to fill this staff because they're even going for a guy that was previously in college to come in and handle this right here. The only other coach that's coming from college to come coach the commanders is Cliff Kingsbury, but he's already had a moment in the NFL with being a head coach. So his name was already known. He already has a lot of notoriety. People are aware of his preference presence. This guy, Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, whoever found him dug deep and basically combed through every staff possible around the NFL and college football and for some reason found him and felt like he was a good guy to give the opportunity. I don't know if there's some type of connection here that allowed him to get that opportunity or if Nick Saban has praised this guy to the point that people were really looking at him to become like to be that next genius coming out of college going to the NFL. Like is this are we grooming the next Mike McDonald here? I have no idea, but it's a very interesting hire. Again, George Banco, an Alabama graduate who worked with Nick Saban staffs from his undergraduate days to several seasons as a defensive analyst, is now leaving Tuscaloosa, Alabama to go to the Commanders. Banco set to be retained by the new Crimson Tide coach, Kalen DeBoer, after DeBoer was hired to replace retired Nick Saban, is accepting a post on Dan Quinn's new Washington Commander staff in the NFL. So apparently, Kalen DeBoer... Ex-Washington coach that went over to Alabama and out of all that sneaky stuff they're doing right now with their official coordinator leaving at the last second, not allowing players to hit the transfer portal because that window's already gone and things like that. I don't know what they got going on, but either way, he was pretty much expecting this guy to still be here. So for him to look around and be like, oh, man, this commander's opportunity is really interesting. It could be a big thing for me. That shows, again, another trait of this commander's what we're building front office coaching staff wise and hopefully players wise as well we're building something that looks like a bright future and we're kind of that ship that everybody wants to hop onto before we take off 
everybody's trying to get on the bandwagon early so that they can be a part of the rebuilding process and and be there when we're Super Bowl contending champs and all of that type of stuff. I'm super excited. Again, he's set to become a defensive quality control coach for the Commanders. George Banco had carved a reputation around the Alabama program for his willingness to take on tasks as he worked through a variety of roles to become one of the Tide's top defensive analysts. So this sounds like a guy, the A-man, work ethic, maybe a little potential here. Banco will be working in Washington for new defensive coordinator Joe Witt Jr., also an Alabama native and Auburn graduate, so maybe there's that connection there. So again, I don't exactly know what to think of this hire yet because this guy's not coming in to truly impact what happens on Sundays, but maybe this is a coach that we're grooming to be the next guy because a lot of people start from defensive analysts or offensive analysts, small roles, work their way up the ranks and become that next genius that we're seeing out here. Bobby Sloak was an analyst at one point in time. On actually the defensive side, of the ball and then he ended up being a genius offensive coordinator who knew you never know this guy may be that i'm not saying he will be but don't sleep on analysts but also at the same time we should not act like we just hit a home run with this hire it's gonna it's gonna take some patience it's gonna take some years to see if this hire was worth it if it was fruitful or not but I'm disturbed because as a Georgia Bulldog fan, why do we keep hiring guys from the University of Florida and the University of Alabama, but not one guy from Georgia? But honestly though, like to stop playing around, as long as we're winning, I love this staff and I'm very optimistic about the staff, even separate from the fact that we keep bringing in these loser franchises. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing though. No. But moving on, former Purdue quarterback David Blau is going to be the assistant QB coach for the Washington Commanders. He's going to work directly under Tavita Pritchard, who's already our quarterback's coach. And again, another one of those things where it's like, we have to sit and wait kind of like a non-applicable when it comes to grade because i don't know how great this guy could potentially be let's dive into his history though former purdue quarterback david blau is moving into a new phase of his football life taking a position as assistant quarterbacks coach for the washington commanders a source close to blau confirmed the news after blau's mother shared the information on a facebook page if that's really the way that we know that that's really interesting blau 28 years old very young will join a washington franchise and transition with a new owner and a new coach and Dan Quinn. Blau spent the past five years in the NFL with the Browns, Lions, Vikings, and Cardinals. Man, he's been getting around. He most he was most recently on the Lions roster as a practice squad member in 2023. So this is his first coaching opportunity, it looks like. It looks like he's been a player his whole time. And he this is his first opportunity as a coach. I'm excited. Blau may be remembered most for forming a strong relationship with Purdue superfan Tyler Trent in the 2018 season. Trent's spirit in the face of a battle with cancer that ultimately took his life, moved the program and the nation. Blau finished his career at Purdue, ranking number four in career passing yards with 9,734. His 69 passing touchdowns is number three. Blau threw for a school single game record 572 yards versus Missouri in 2018 and helped the program to two bowls under Jeff Brom. Blau entered the NFL in 2019 as an undrafted free agent with the Browns, getting traded to the Lions during training camp. He started five games that season in Detroit, completing 54% of his passes for 984 yards with four touchdowns, six interceptions. Not great. He also caught a touchdown pass in 2019, though. And then Blau played two more years in Detroit before landing with the Vikings and Cardinals in 2022. There, Blau started two games for the Cardinals that season, hitting 65% of his passes, 402 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. Still not great, but an improvement. And Blau stepped away from the field having completed 57 percent of his passes for 1435 yards six touchdowns nine interceptions not great but he also ran 14 times for 16 yards i'm getting very specific here because there's not a lot of information out on this guy i'm giving you every detail that i possibly can about this guy blau played in nine games and made seven starts in his five seasons as a quarterback and now he's officially moving on to his first coaching career job and they must see something in him to hand him an assistant quarterback's coach job off the rip as his first NFL coaching job at the age of 28 too, really young. Maybe this is that next Bobby Slug, Mike McDaniels type of guy, Kyle Shanahan, you never know, man. I'm not saying that he will be, but interesting hire. You know, I'm just trying to find something to say about these guys. I just wanted to update y'all on them and just to get, keep, you know, keep the flow going, keep everybody excited about the hires that we're making. You never know, there has to be something to these guys though has to be something also i saw a report that anthony 
Lynn will in fact double up as not only the running game coordinator, but also the running backs coach. Like I said, they should allow him to do since earlier today. Was that earlier today, Wednesday, or was that yesterday when we hired Anthony Lynn? Man, it feels like it's been like a week since we hired Anthony Lynn, and that might have just been hours ago, less than 24 hours ago. That's crazy. But either way, in that video, I talked about how Anthony Lynn, they might as well just go ahead and let him coach the running backs while he's at it. And it's apparently from what I'm seeing around from some sources is that he will be the running backs coach as well. And when you look on Wikipedia, it says running backs coach and run game coordinator in great form. So now it seems like the final Washington Commanders 2024 coaching staff is finished. It looks like we wrapped it up. Head coach Dan Quinn, offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury, defensive coordinator Joe Witt Jr., special teams coordinator Larry Izzo, defensive lines coach Bobby Johnson, one of the most questionable hires, but we'll see. Bringing in Anthony Lynn definitely increases my optimism in that hire and my faith that that will work out. Definitely raises the floor a little bit. Quarterbacks coach Tavita Pritchard, wide receivers coach Bobby Ingram, running game coordinator and running backs coach potentially is what I'm seeing around. Anthony Lynn, tight ends coach David Ra, defensive lines coach Daryl Tapp, Linebackers coach Ken Norton Jr., DB's coach Tom Donatel, assistant defensive lines coach Sharif Floyd, defensive passing game coordinator Jason Simmons, pass rush specialist Ryan Kerrigan, senior defensive analyst John Pagano, and we're still technically waiting on Brian Johnson to be officially announced with a title, but it looks like from everywhere that I'm seeing that it's more than likely going to be passing game coordinator, and I'm super excited. And don't forget that we hired Lions executive Lance Newmark to be our assistant GM earlier today. Well, technically Wednesday, February 14th as well. Shouts out to Nikki Javala for this information because the commander's front office and coaching staff now have 17 total Super Bowl rings, won as players and executives slash coaches. Adam Peters has won three Super Bowls, two with the Patriots, one was with the Broncos, that Super Bowl 50 roster that basically carried Painting Manning to a win. And then even that 49ers team that just went to a Super Bowl, but he still only technically won three. Martin Mayhew won a Super Bowl as a player. Chris Polian won a Super Bowl as an executive. Dan Quinn won a Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator. Cliff Kingsbury won a Super Bowl as a player. Joe Wood Jr. won a Super Bowl as some type of coach coordinator. Larry Izzo won three Super Bowls, all his players. Anthony Lynn won two Super Bowls, all his players. And Ken Norton Jr. won four Super Bowls, three as players and one as a coach. So technically, Ken Norton Jr. has the most winning experience as far as winning Super Bowls out of anybody else on this list. Then you have second place, Adam Peters and Larry Izzo, both tied with three. Then after that, you have Anthony Lynn with two, and then everybody else has one. But again, the Commanders have 17 Super Bowl rings between this coaching staff and this front office. And that's a lot of winning, man. That You need that. It's hard to win without having people that have won before in your coaching staff in your front office. And again, we have 17 rings between all of them. That makes me even a little bit more excited and optimistic about what we're building here than I even was before I knew that stat. Shouts out to Nigga Javala for that again. And of course, there's no hiring video without a Resh Manual fun fact. Shouts out to Resh Manual for this one. Follow him on Twitter. If you're not, you're missing out. Quinn had Raheem Morris as his assistant head coach throughout his Falcons tenure. Curious if a coach in his commander staff will end up adding that title and it looks like there will not be that guy anthony lynn didn't get that title which is kind of a little weird i was kind of expecting it to potentially be him but at the same time people are speaking very highly of anthony lynn one quote said one of the best leaders in a locker room i've ever seen he comes from the parcel school sean payton players swear by him when you've played the game and you've won that goes a long way in the locker room unquote which also goes back to the fact that we have so many super bowl rings between our coaches when they pull up to our first team meetings and we and they first talk to the players face to face and we start getting some practices in we start our offseason workouts i want them to have those super bowl rings on to show to send a message or at the very least wear it with how they walk in the in the in the confidence that they have but again i'm a little surprised that anthony weaver or really nobody in this entire coaching staff was named assistant head coach so i saw the lake lewis for this one because i agree i thought anthony lynn got a raw deal with the chargers he's another former head coach that has extensive experience coaching running backs this was another great hire for the commander staff or front office that's coming together nicely fans should be very excited i completely agree i just wanted to speak on all of that praise that anthony lynn deserves also shouts out to at commander's realm for this starting running back production of the anthony lynn 
again i hope y'all have a chair pull up a seat because we're going to dive into this 2003 fred taylor 1572 yards 2004 fred taylor 1224 yards 2005 julius jones 993 yards 2006 julius jones 1084 yards 2007 jamal lewis 1305 yards 2008 jamal lewis 1002 yards then 2009 thomas jones ran for 1402 yards 2010 ladanian thomason 914 yards 2011 sean green 1054 yards and then sean green again 2012 1063 yards and then 2013 Bilal Powell had 697 yards not that great 2014 Chris Ivory had 821 yards and then LaShawn McCoy in 2015 had 895 yards but then LaShawn McCoy in 2016 1267 yards Melvin Gordon in 2017 1105 yards and then it kind of goes falls off the tail end from there like melvin gordon 2018 885 yards but you can blame injuries for that 2019 melvin gordon 612 yards you can blame injuries for that as well and then 2020 austin eckler 530 yards for some reason austin eckler just did not work under anthony lynn for some odd reason 2021 jamal williams 601 yards but then christian mccaffrey but also due to injuries 746 yards in 2022 he was also traded that year and then 2023 Christian McCaffrey this past season had 1,459 yards. So Anthony Lynn ended strong as a running backs coach slash running game coordinator. I'm expecting here, him to come here and be great. Most importantly, just simply because that boy Cliff Kingsbury needs a strong voice to counter his opinion when it comes to the run game. He's super pass heavy. He's shown the flexibility to try to incorporate the run game into his offense as a head coach for the Arizona Cardinals, but he's still, when in doubt, going to always lean towards being pass heavy. So if you're going to hire a run game coordinator, make sure it's a guy that Cliff Kingsbury Barry will have to listen to because of their experience, their leadership, their expertise, their, their confidence, all of that. Anthony Lynn is a great candidate for that. That's an ex-head coach coming here to just literally be the run game coordinator and running backs coach, not even the offensive coordinator. Cliff Kingsbury is going to listen to that guy, and I think that's better for us in the long run. I feel like we'll have a great pass, run balance, really excited. Also, shouts out that we won Dallas for pointing this out from the Ben Standig article where he's breaking down a lot of our hires and apparently Marty Herney is transitioning into an advisory role unlikely to extend into the 2024 season so Marty Herney even though he's in an advisory role he didn't get fired yet he's more than likely going to stay through the draft but was also more than likely not going to be here by the time the season starts which makes sense when you come in with a new front office an entirely new regime new coaching staff and all of that typically you keep all of the scouts and talent evaluators that have already done all of this homework for you leading up to the draft why would you fire them before the draft let them stick through the draft and use whatever they can whatever knowledge they have to help inform you and on and advise you on certain decisions you should potentially make in the draft why I just throw away all that work for nothing but then after the draft typically a lot of those guys will go it's already been announced that marty herney will go we'll see if martin mayhew will be able to stick around i'm more confident in martin mayhew sticking around than a marty herney but that just lets you know so again marty herney's more than likely here until after the draft also, another commander staff update. Rob Rogers is staying as the SVP of football administration, at least through the draft. Shane Tube is staying as offensive quality control. And Anthony Lynn's title will, in fact, be running backs, run game coordinator, both at the same time, just to give y'all that update. Also, I don't know if y'all saw, but Antonio Pierce, now the Raiders head coach, went on the Pivot podcast and was talking about basically that how the whole Cliff Kingsbury thing went down. It was basically Magic Johnson to confirm we heard reports about this but he confirmed that they basically magic johnson came in out of nowhere and basically stole cliff kingsbury from the raiders he was willing to go to the raiders he was about to basically do it whatever that contract dispute was all of those rumors that we heard maybe that didn't play as much of a role as we thought maybe it plays somewhat of a role but not enough antonio pierce's himself from the raiders side is giving credit to magic johnson for being the reason that we got him also Tom Donatel's brother shouts out the Resh manual for this one as well. Tom Donatel's brother Steve was on the Stanford coaching staff with Commander's Courts to Vita Pritchard. So maybe that's where that connection comes from. Just wanted to throw that in there. Also, Tom Donatel served on Jim L. Mora's staff at UCLA. Dan Quinn got his NFL coaching start under Mora when he was the defensive coordinator of the 49ers. And they were there together in Seattle as well. So those are the connections to potentially like a Dom, a Tom Donatel who we've already done a video on, not this 
one. But once I saw that information come from Rush Manual, I wanted to go ahead and update y'all on that. And now before we get up out of here, I just want to talk about Steve Wilkes a little bit. I doubt we hire him because we literally just don't have any roles left. Like we would have to just invent a title that maybe no other NFL team has to bring him on. He probably wouldn't even be willing to come here. But if he wants to come here, you find a role for him. Because shouts out to my boy Kyron Samuels on Twitter. He brings up a great point. If Steve Wilkes is the fall guy for the 49ers, we're going to have to have some uncomfortable conversations. I love Kyle, but it can't always be someone else's fault, dog. This team is the team that you wanted, the scheme you wanted top to bottom, loaded roster, all of that. So there's no excuses at this point, and there's no way we're blaming Steve Wilkes. Shouts out to my boy Felix Trammell over there as well on Twitter. Terrible. His defense held the Chiefs to three points in the first half and 19 points through four quarters, but for somehow, it's his fault completely agree wilkes right now is the scapegoat but the offense woefully underperformed with minimal impact from kittle samuel mccaffrey in the clutch somehow is steve wilkes fault and on top of that shouts out to bucky brooks he's even taking up for him it's crazy how many players are assigning blame to the coaches sure the coaches provide the plan but it's also on the players to prepare themselves through film study as well they're not coaching robots the best teams feature players who go above and beyond the basic scouting report completely agree with bucky brooks there and then even jason lock was not playing he had probably the most anger and aggression in his tweet he said kyle shanahan eternal scapegoater drop steve wilkes after shutting down mahomes and regulation knowing no defensive coordinator jobs are open which is a good point steve wilkes is basically out left to dry like there are no defensive coordinator jobs available if you were going to do this would have been nice if you could have done it sooner but at the same time i mean yeah they just got done with the super bowl so he couldn't have done it sooner but let them stick around unless you just have this elite defensive coordinator candidate out there that you're trying to get this seems very silly to most of us out here it literally looks like all you're doing is giving making steve wilkes the scapegoat and that's it there's no strategic advantage to this move it's literally let's just put the blame on him i've already been blamed for enough super bowl losses let's find another guy to blame kyle didn't tell the team ot rules made stupid decision in overtime quit running the ball couldn't score 20 points in 60 minutes kittle iu debo purdy all mundane that's all coming from jason locking for and hey man it's hard not to agree i really feel sorry for steve wilkes because he is the scapegoat and i'm only bringing this up in this commander's video because i mean if we can just find a role if we could just make up a role for him i would love to have him here and granted he would probably leave to go become the defensive coordinator somewhere else by the time the 2025 off season starts by the time we're around this time next year he'll probably go go ahead and dip out because he deserves to be a defensive coordinator somewhere he deserves to be a defensive coordinator for the 49ers right now in my opinion it's not his fault that they lost the super bowl but hey what can you do if the commanders can find some role for him adam peters you already have that connection there we've already brought over three 49ers guys including adam peters let's make it a fourth but there are no openings right now so i don't know what he would do I, and I highly doubt, I mean, maybe he would prefer to just sit at home and not do anything, or maybe he'd be willing to come here on a really small role until he can bounce back, get back on his feet, and go get a defensive coordinator job this next offseason, 2025 next year but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video please stiff arm that like button stiff arm that subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the content i really appreciate y'all for staying patient with me i appreciate all y'all that are there for these late night uploads this one's probably going to be uploaded by like 4 a.m and there are still some of y'all that are on it immediately so i really appreciate y'all man appreciate all of the love appreciate all of the comments comments too again i'm gonna set aside some hours to really try to reply read and reply to as many comments as possible from previous videos i'm gonna even go back as far as like a week ago to or maybe even two weeks ago and try to do as much as possible because i know there are so many comments that i wish i could have seen i know there's all kinds of great compliments there's funny jokes there's great arguments with somebody disagreeing with me but providing great stats and a, and a great opinion as to why they disagree with me to make me a smarter fan so i'm really trying to get there i've just been super busy so stay tuned i appreciate y'all and again once we're done with all of these hires once we get that training staff done on to just purely free agency and draft content i'm super excited and maybe some previews of what's coming for the next season because like we already know who our opponents are i'm gonna do a video breaking that down and then of course we'll officially 
get the real schedule that's gonna be fun we'll do a breakdown of that i have so many ideas so many video topics just stay tuned for all of the content i'm gonna catch y'all later appreciate y'all i'm out oh.